I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Tough for him and tougher for me. Uh, we had worked together for many years. He came to the Congress only a year after I did. And uh, we had fought in many good battles. We'd won most and uh, lost some as well. Uh, I told him I thought the country would be in good hands. I told him that it was very important, I felt, for him to keep, him, keep Henry Kissinger. He agreed. He said he thought we had a fine cabinet. Uh, and then uh, as uh, we were leaving, I said, I'm going to tell you something. I said, I remember so well uh, the last, uh, uh, one of the last conversations I had with uh, uh, President Eisenhower. As a matter of fact, the last conversation I had with him before I was inaugurated. Uh, he called me on the phone. He said he wanted to wish me well. And then he went on to say, and his voice broke a bit when he said it. He said, you know, I have only one regret on this great day. This is the last time I could ever call you Dick, Mr. President. And I said, Jerry, this is the last time I'll call you Jerry, Mr. President. Brought a tear or two to his eyes. I think to mine, too. We shook hands. He left. After the speech, I went over to the residence. Henry was very, very thoughtful. He, uh, he came up to me and he said, I'd like to walk to the residence with me. He said, I've always done this after the big, the important speeches. And as we got to the door of the residence, he said, Mr. President, history is going to record that you were a great president. I said, Henry, that'll depend on who writes the history. I went upstairs and all the family was gathered in the West Hall. And as I came in, David said, I don't see how you did it. I don't see how you did it, because he had seen the text in advance. And then suddenly they all got up, and they came around, just surrounded me. It was sort of a huddle, sort of a family embrace, saying nothing and saying everything. And then Tricia said, Daddy, he said, you're... You're wet. Your coat's wet through. And I began to have a chill. And what had happened was that the room had been so hot and the tension was so great that I was perspiring clear through the suit, the same suit, incidentally, that I had worn when I had gone to Moscow and spoken on uh, television to the Russian people just in 1972. Well, soon the chill went away and I went down to the Lincoln room and made a few calls to people. Uh, heard the chanting outside, uh, reminded me of the Vietnam days, except this time the chant was, jail to the chief, jail to the chief. Didn't bother me, however. You know, after all, I'd been heckled by experts. <laughs>